worship, worship is about his worth. It's about his character. It's about calling out who he is, that he's trustworthy. He's faithful. He's unchangeable. He's powerful. He is love. He is perfect. He is forgiving. Yes. And he is invincible. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, before you're seated, greet your neighbor next to you. Tell them you're glad they're here. Tell them they're here. Let's poodle today. Tell them their makeup looks great. Tell them you like their outfit. So glad they're here.
Oh, and then we have our married couples. Um, marriage, uh, our marriage retreat's coming up in October. Um, I still keep seeing Alaska's having great deals going on out there, so um, if you don't want to drive, uh, you can fly. Come join us. It's going to be a good weekend. It really is. And um, we're excited about it, and God's speaking to both of us about it, and, and I know he is to Pastor Jason and Janet also. So it uh, promises to be a very fulfilling and rewarding time. Uh, and then uh, today is Growth Track Step 2. Um, we're very excited about this. You know, 87% of people do not know why they were born and put on this earth. Um, God created you with a design. In, he designed you with a purpose and with gifts and talents, and we can help you with that. This, uh, this track, Step 2, is a way to find that out. And so come join us. We're right after service at noon in the fireside room back here. If you can't find it, you know, somebody else can help you locate that room. And uh, we would love to see you there. It's only about 40 minutes long. So come join us. Uh, now I want to introduce and invite Kristen up to uh, give us a couple of announcements. All right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm standing in front of all of you today, and I rarely do it unless there's an event coming up. And so that's what I'm excited to talk to you guys about today is an event. Um, and as opposed to telling you all about the event to start, this time I'm going to tell you the date first, because there's two events taking place. So if you have your phones or you have your calendars, September 15th, okay? Just put it in right now, because you're going to want to be a part of one of the many things going on this special day. So September 15th, it's a Saturday, uh, and the first thing I'm going to tell you about is both events that we're doing on September 15th are for ministries we already support. So uh, the first one we, we give regularly, we give monthly, we help Hope 360, and they're having their annual uh, their annual fundraiser, but it's a walk. It's called uh, Life is a Gift. It's Walk for a Hope, and so if you're someone who hasn't been able to help much with Hope 360 or wants to find a better way to get involved, this is the big one. This is they do it once a year, and we're going to do it as a church. We're going to support it, excuse me, better. So Hope 360's walk, it's a big fundraiser, so there's lots of ways to help. So the first one I'll tell you about is they have a walk for life. Meaning, we walk as a group, it's about two miles, and it's just walking, strollers are welcome, all ages are welcome, and it's just about bringing people together. That takes place at 10 a.m., uh, and so let me just start with, if you have any questions, please come see me. I will have the information for you, but there's a lot of ways to get involved. So there's the walk. If you get funding and you fundraise and you get sponsors, if you raise $50, We'll get a shirt, but we just want you to be a part. If you get fundraisers, if you know a corporation, where you work, friends, neighbors, it's all of that, all that money is helping save lives, change families. That's what we want to do. Okay, so there's the walking piece. If you're a teenager, there's an essay writing contest, and in first place, there's prize money. So you can win $100 in your first place, $50 in your second place, third, uh, and $25 for third place. But the point is, it's about showing that next generation how you can be involved. Okay, so there's a few essay prompts. It needs to be done by the end of August. I'm only looking at one part of the room right now. Yeah. <laughs> so ask questions if you have them, uh, and I'll help you get everything submitted and turned in. It's a really great opportunity. The third way you can get involved is they like to do a silent auction. So if you're someone who likes to put together baskets or assemble um, different, um, bat like maybe you have a Nike employee store ticket or sporting goods, or family nights, or dinners out, or if you have anything that you want to do, there's tons of ideas, but if you're drawn to the baskets, how can you donate? Let me know what your thoughts are on that. I'd love to help you put that together uh, with the things we have. And then we want people actually bidding on those silent auction items. So September 15th, we want you to come. We want you to be a part. Who knows what you'll walk away with? Okay. So that's our big Hope 360. You'll see lots of advertisements moving forward September 15th. That evening is our second event, so stay with me. Okay. The other big, um, other big group that we sponsor is Northwest Bible Training. It's their graduation dinner, their promotion dinner. So for $20, you are sowing into that ministry. It's going to be a delicious 
chicken dinner. But it's not about the dinner, it's about the people. Okay, so that evening, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., we want to have, we want to let them know in advance. So that's why you've already got it on your, um, you've already got it on your calendar. If you need dinner plans, we've got you taken care of. $20, so is the Northwest Bible. That morning, you'll have been exercising and bidding on silent auction items. Okay? Maybe you can do one, maybe you can do two, maybe you can do all. Just talk to me. We have a little bit of time. Just come see me if you have questions and you want to be a part on September 15th. Yes! Okay. Thank you. And now let's bring up Pastor Jerry. We'll get ready to go. Thank you, Kristen. I just want to add on that on the uh, on the banquet. Uh, the first, how many spots are at the table, do you recall? Anybody know? How many spots at the table, banquet table? Ten. The first ten spots are already paid for. So if you sign up, the first 10 spots are already paid. So after that, so don't worry about it. Northwest came to us and said, we don't, we want you guys coming so bad. And so, so that's taken care of. We just really appreciate you being a part. The other thing that I want to do before I get into my message is just bring out one other thing that you all participated in so well about and helped us so much. And that was with the back to school um, uh, supplies that have a drive here. And just so you all know, we kind of did it on the side, but uh, Peg, Peg Moore won a raffle. So thank you so much. So she won the raffle for the for the Pioneer Center. And the thing I want to tell you about is, is the director here, Kathy, she pulled me aside and she wanted me to pass a message on to you. And so I'm gonna do it to the best of my ability. She pulled me aside because they were blown away every Monday when they get to work here, they find all these extra donations that we had brought in. You guys all brought on these supplies. And so last week, or whatever the day was, they took all, I don't know how they got all over there, probably one of the buses, they took it all over to the library. And, uh, and the library, because they were collecting it for kids in need in this area, they were blown away. They've never had so many donations. And Kathy, bless her heart, she, she gave you all credit. She said, thank you, Connection Church. They meet at our building every week. It's between us and the Meals on Wheels drivers that, that come here every week. We, we supply to so many things for them. So I just want to thank you. Uh, you guys are making a difference. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing. It's a good thing to be together. So I hope you all can join your prayer guides. Yeah. All right? And if you don't have it with you, uh, just take your neighbors or go back and get one at the back table. Or uh, These are something, I hope they're getting worn out. I hope that, uh, I hope they're writing in them. I've been writing in the back of mine. Uh, I got my name in the front. I've been writing notes and things like that because I want to learn. I want to learn better ways to pray. And and these are the sorts of things. It's no problem, you guys. Take several and give them to your friends. Okay. I have four more cases of them because I saw you. I saw you giving them away. You all pay for them. You know. You, you pay for them with your tithes and offering. I saw you. I saw, even, I just like Lord. The Lord gave me the number to order because he said people are going to give them away and it's going to impact their communities and families in Midwood. So, so I hope that you're learning from this. I'm learning a great deal. I hope this becomes a resource for you to help you really understand the different methods of prayer. And we're going to go over another one today. And uh, last week we talked about the Lord's Prayer. And that's modeled, I think, in the, in the very first one there. There's several different types of models there. And uh, again, it meant a lot to me to go through that, to study it out. Uh, today, though, I want to remind you of our, our starting scripture. It's in your notes there. You can follow along in your Bible app. You can follow along on the screen. You can follow along on your notes there. But let's get right into the word here and see that first opening scripture. It says right up there that the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power. All right? It has great power, and it produces wonderful results. Yeah. God put this into place. He, he, he designed prayer for us. So that so when it's earnestly done, it was going to have a real power, a difference. And remember, we talked about that power last time. It's a bubbling over. It's a it's a power that's that's full of strength, and that's what God has for us. And today we're going to cover the, the next uh, the next type of prayer that's listed in your book. And you know, you can open it if you have it to kind of look at it, so you kind of have an idea what we're talking about. I'm going to walk through some things there, but it's on page 14. It's called the Tabernacle Prayer. The Tabernacle. Prayer. And to be totally honest with you, this is the one of all the types of prayer I was the most afraid of. Mm. Really, Pastor? You get afraid? Yes, I do. Uh, there's sometimes the Old, Old Testament can be a little bit overwhelming. I have kind of a weak stomach, and so you read about some of the blood offerings and uh, and you just and the smells and you just you know it can kind of really you know it, it can it, thank you 
Jesus. You know, I saw him just like, I'm so grateful. But, but there's so much we can learn because it's so interesting. When you look at all these different patterns of prayer that are shown in Scripture, whether they're Old Testament or New Testament, they're all about the same pattern. It all kind of takes you through the same thing. But, but there's just meaning behind it. And that's what I kind of want to share with you today. So I'm going to give you a little bit of history here to kind of put us all on the same. Maybe, you're, maybe you guys are Old Testament scholars already. I have one guy in, in our church who is an Old Testament scholar, and uh, he's not able to be here today, but he actually went back to Israel and got to see a setup of a real tabernacle. So he was real excited about us teaching on this today. And I'm glad he's not here because I'd be like, oh my goodness, I'm, not, I'm probably not saying it right, you know, because I've not actually seen it. I just read about it and seen pictures and and so we'll talk about that. Here we go. It's really what this really is. It's probably a better word. It's really the prayer of Moses. It's, it's the model that God gave Moses when he's dealing with the Israelites. When the Israelites were, were told to go out of Egypt into the promised land. And it was supposed to, I think, I don't know exactly how long, take a few weeks or whatever. To, and it ends up taking 40 years. All right? And so they end up going through the desert. And this whole time, God had a plan of his presence being with him. Remember in the Old Testament, God dwelt in a building. Yeah. All right? God dwelt in... Did you know before we all got here, God was not in this building? Now, God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. But his presence that we're talking about, the literal, tangible God, he chose to instead, through Jesus Christ, live in us. Amen. So the minute you guys walk... Every time another person walked in, it just got more God, more God, more God. Because just his presence is here yeah. because of the work of Jesus. We need to get that. But back then... It wasn't, it wasn't in people. Sometimes the Bible referred to the presence would come on people, like when a person gave a prophetic message, and it talks about the presence of God would come on a person to give them the words. The Holy Spirit is inside of us. Yeah. And recall also, God told them where, how, to, how to travel. You know, so you can kind of come, uh, wait a minute, I don't want to do that, but you can kind of, you, he told them how to travel, and he did it with a, uh, what, a pillar of fire at night? So if when you're in the middle of the act, and a cloud, right, by the day, yeah. and a cloud by the day, so that they would they would always know how to follow God. Yeah. Well, it's written in Scripture, it's written in your booklet also, how to follow this plan for prayer. And the thing of it was, in order for God to go with them, they had to carry this tabernacle with them. And the tabernacle was very, very precise, and it was very ordered. See, our God is a God of order. Yeah. Our God is a God, and that's why we do things with excellence. That's why we do our best, all right? It doesn't have to be the best, it's our best, yeah. all right? So that's how we follow him. So so let me catch up on my notes here and make sure I'm caught up with where you are. Uh, at, that, uh, uh, at that time, he lived in a building and he wrote on tablets. In these days, he lives in us and writes in our hearts. He writes in our heart, amen. Totally different. And the temple then was a tabernacle, which was a portable building. It was an actual physical residence, where today it goes with us. Right. We, are, we, are, we are a temple of the Holy Spirit, yeah. the New Testament teaches, all right? So, so that's, a little, that's a little history on it. So let's go to Exodus 25, verses 8 and 9. Read a couple scriptures here to get some context. But he said, this is what God said, have the, God said, have the people of Israel build me a holy sanctuary, so I can do something. See, God's always desired, always has, always is. He wants to be right with you. Yeah. God's desire is never be God way up in heaven, you know, unrelated to your life. God's desire has always been right with us. Remember, if you've read in Genesis, Adam and Eden, Adam walked with God. That's, that's, that's God's always been God's point. So you've got to get close to him. So God had to set this up. Uh, he says, uh, among the next verse, he says, you must build this tabernacle and its furnishings exactly, he says, mm -hmm. very specific, mm -hmm. exactly according to something. Mm -hmm. I like that word, the pattern. What I want you to pick up today is the pattern, the pattern of what God is teaching. There is exact, precise things we want to understand, but look for the pattern. He says, the pattern, he says, I will show you. God's so good. God, nothing is hidden with God. It's all out. He's showing us. I have a pattern for you to be very, very close to me. And that's where he wants to be. God wants to be a place where he can be close to you. So, we're going to start out with a picture up here. I'm going to show you a picture. I hope it shows up on the grid, okay? This is kind of a drawing. Uh, I don't have a point or anything. But the, the tabernacle, remember, it had to be portable. They were, they were going from place to place. So everything had things to carry stuff. Everything was made out of cloth or canvas or sheepskin, whatever they did, I don't know. 
And it's actually two tents. That fence is actually a tent. So that the outer part there is an open air tent. There's nothing on top, it just covers that. Then you'll see some furniture or some things inside. And then there's the inner tent inside and the inner one is enclosed, all right? Guess where God is dwelling? He's in that inner part. And we're gonna get there today. We're gonna walk through it. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. So if any of you have seen, he was in, in an ark. Anybody in here that is breathing that has not seen Raiders of the Lost Ark? <laughs> all right, you know, we, we have all, I mean, haven't you, or at least one of them, you know, that Raiders, that's what, that's really what it's about. I mean, it's, it, it, it was, they were trying to find this original ark uh, that God dwelt in. He no longer dwells in the ark, all right? No, he lives, he lives in the He lives in the so, so it's a tent with six pieces of furniture, which we're going to talk about, and, uh, and God dwelled inside the ark. So every time, every time if it's daytime and the clouds move, they all have to pack it all up, get it back together. You know how after church we do that here? We pack everything up, get it together, and it fits in there. They had to do that, and whether they walked for days or hours, they had to go to the next spot. So even as it turned nightfall, the fire would just it would just fall the fire instead. So that's, that's how it was. And if I were them, I'd want to follow God too. Okay, God, you're going that way. I'm going, that's how we want to live our lives. God, wherever you're going, I want to go too. I want to be a part. Amen? Amen. All right. So, so uh, Exodus 33, 11. I don't know if it's in your notes, but, uh, it, it, but it's up here. Exodus 33, 11 says this. Inside the tent of meeting, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face. Now, again, okay. Read between the lines here and apply that to you. He would speak to Moses face to face. Get the pattern here. He wants to speak to you. Amen. Amen. Face to face. Yeah. It's awesome. If you think about that, if you realize when you're praying and getting in a position where you're face to face, you'd probably be a little more serious and disciplined about your prayer. There probably wouldn't be room at our house to hold you. There's plenty of room right now. Come on down. Saturday's <laughs> night off. We don't serve snacks. We just serve Jesus. But we're there. Right. <laughs> Man, come on. All right. So, uh, so anyway, face to face. That's what speaks to a friend. Oh God, you're so no. I want to be close to you, face to face. We want to, we want to be intimate. We want to exchange what's on your heart and talk to you. That's what God desires. It's not like the Wizard of Oz. Oh, great and mighty Oz behind the thing. It's God wants to be just like, oh, just want you to be right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's the sort of relationship he wanted then. That's what he wants now. All right? So let's kind of talk through this process. Let's walk through the next 20 minutes. We'll walk through this little booklet here, and, and you can follow along. It's just going to light up just with that. But... Uh, but uh, uh, I want to read you one more verse, this time out of the New Testament, because people might say, well, you know, but that's Old Testament. That's Old Testament. This is, why would we look at that? This Old Testament, Jesus did something. Well, he did. And the next verse tells us this in Matthew 5, 17. It says, don't misunderstand why I have come. Okay? Don't understand why Jesus died on the cross, came and lives, dwells in us, the Holy Spirit. I didn't come to abolish. He didn't come to get rid of that, the pattern the writings of the prophets know I came to accomplish their purpose. Yeah. So it's through him we get to walk through this process together. Amen? Amen. So let's talk about it. So we went from there. And you remember that picture? You don't need to show it again. Remember the picture? There was, a, there was an entrance they had to go in. The first thing they had to do, and it's the first one, the first fill in there, they had, to go from, they had to go from the outer court. There was an entrance inside. And there's a reason for that. And the first thing they did was get God. God. Before they got into meeting face to face with God, before just you notice Cindy patterned that today, it's like God, if you never did anything else for me, that it's just you've already done enough. That's how we begin our prayers. Honestly, most of the time I forget to begin my prayers by stirred up or heard about some Lord. I need this, 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 <laughs> and I know God still honors that, but God says just kind of step back, and look at the pattern. Mm -hmm. Oh God, <laughs> I just give thanks to who you are. Yeah. That's what praise is all about. I just Lord, you're just, you're just amazing. Yeah. There's no one like you. When you follow the pattern, you don't read word for word what it says. It's like, Lord, I want to begin my prayer life just like the Israelites did as they came in, as they, they went through there, Lord. They just, they just gave thanks to you. Gratitude, let me tell you, is one of the healthiest emotions yeah. you can have. Not only as just a human being, but especially as a believer. 
grateful. Be grateful, man. You might say, I have things I need, but if I don't get any of them, Lord, you're enough. Yeah. Jesus, you're enough. You're all I need. I think we sang about that. Yeah. So Psalm 104 says this, to do this, to enter. This is what we do. This, this actually symbolizes what they did, and we still do it today. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, Lord. That was a good to be church in church day. Just good to be alive. Lord, thank you. Thank you for who you are. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him yeah. and praise his name. If you got a sour look on your face, just slap your own face and wake it up. <laughs> just, you know, it's like sometimes that's what we need. And, you know, if someone else slaps you, it'll be offensive. But if you do it to yourself, you know, just, oh, Lord. I know it's. I know I got a lot of faith in there. I know this happening, but Lord, I'm just. I couldn't do it without you. I couldn't do it without you. I couldn't do it without you. Enter and give thanks. Now it's very interesting that once you entered, and we won't go back to the original picture. I'm going to show you some some, some other pictures. Once you entered, the first thing you saw was this next thing, the picture there, the, the brazen altar. You'll notice again, these are not fantastic drawings. I just tried to find some things. To, you notice how it's handles? You know, so you can carry it around. It's very, very portable. It had a grate on it because they would do sacrifices on there. All right? It was fairly large, from my understanding. I don't know the exact size. But get this. Okay. You walked in. The brazen altar always had rotten, dead flesh, burned flesh, charcoal, blood. It was <laughs> that's what they were that's what that was the first oh Lord I'm so excited and I praise you and I walk in it would, it would hit you. God says this is the pattern you need as you approach me. You literally had to walk by and remind yourself that God had to do something for you to be in his presence. Lord had to be still. In order to be in God's presence, death had to happen to sin, and the way it happened, blood had to be spilled. That's how God set it up. Yeah. Today, the brazen altar is fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Who spilled his blood for us. Yeah. When you take communion, which we do on Saturday mornings now, we're yeah. remembering the body and blood that was spilled for you. So the second thing there is the brazen altar. It was It's an opportunity for us to focus on the cross. Yeah. The work stops. Thankful, Jesus, that you don't have a sacrifice of pigeons and burpee and all that. Right. Jesus, you did it for us. Yes. Yeah. Don't ever go into the presence of God without first recognizing what Jesus did. Yes. He did it. And remind yourself. Continue it. Now, this process, as I'm giving you this pattern, you can do it in three minutes and spend 30 seconds in each thing, or you can do it in an hour. You can kind of walk through this. You're just trying to, okay, I, I, I'm entering with praise. I'm recognizing what Jesus has done for me. Romans 5, 6 says this. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came in at just the right time and died for us sinners. He did. He is the brazen altar. He is our reminder. The cross does things for us. Okay, look up at the screen. It's done for you. The cross does something for us. It gives us salvation. Yeah. God forgives all my sin. It gives us healing. Yeah. All right? He heals all my diseases. He gives us redemption. Changes us into, uh, rescues me and restores me. Mm -hmm. Gives us transformation. Yeah. God changes us into his likeness. Yes. That we are continually wanting to be more Christ-like. Yes. Blessed. Yes. God provides everything I need. So, Father, I just thank you for the cross. Yes. Lord, we're just grateful, Father, that we don't have to deal with, with smelly animals and burnt offerings and that no one else has to die. That you did it once and for all. Yeah. That the blood was shed for us and for all mankind and all eternity, Father. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we don't take that for granted. Lord, help us understand that and walk forward. Let us, let us see that as we pray today Amen. and every day. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, this is really good. The next thing you see is this picture here, and it's called a labor. A labor. Now, what a labor is, okay, so you've, got, you've entered the courts, and then you've gone by the, the brazen altar, and the next thing you get is a station with a, with a labor. And a labor is probably where we get the word laboratory. I don't know. I didn't look it up. It just happened. But it, it is not where you, it's where you clean up. It's where, it's where it's, 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 it has, it had water in it. Now, the unique thing about the labor was not that it just had water in it. 
But do you know what was at the bottom of it? Um, I don't want to know. <laughs> Mirrors. So you had to see yourself while you watched. It was full of water. You had to start cleaning yourself before you went into the presence of the Lord. Yeah. See, the label represents something that's the next bill. Offer every part of my life to God. See, we all have these hidden things. It's not just outside dirt. Right. We all have these things. <laughs> you present everything to God. Yeah. You come to Him naked. You come to Him literally, like with your soul. It's just like Lord, every, you see everything, God. And I know, Lord, I wrote that covering stuff up and hiding my sin, and but I know you see everything, and Lord, I just present that to you. I just, it's just, it's there, Lord. Help me deal with it. Help me become more Christ-like. Help me change what I need to change. Offer every part of your life. Start with your brain. Father, I, I know my brain. I think the wrong thoughts. Lord, renew my mind. Renew my brain. Father, my eyes, don't let them look at lustful things or cover my neighbor's things or, or use them for, for anything destructive, Lord. Lord, my ears. Father, I just give you my ears, Father. I, I, I know how to turn things off. Lord, I don't do it enough, Lord. Help me. Help me to go. And see how you just go through your feet. Give me your feet. Lord, I'm going places I shouldn't be going. I know I shouldn't be going. So, Lord, you have my feet today. That's, that's, just, that's all. It's just a, it's a process. Amen? Amen. Well, where's that in the Bible, Pastor? Romans 12.1. Yes. <laughs> Romans 12.1. This is New Testament. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you. I plead with you. Give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be this, a living and holy sacrifice that find the kind you will find acceptable. This is truly the way to I tell you, it's an exercise that we want to challenge ourselves to do. It sounds like a lot of work, Pastor. It's really not. If it becomes, you know, it takes 21 days. To work. We have 21 days of prayer because it takes the natural mind 21 days to make a change. All right? Mm-hmm. We'll pick up, as you're working through this book, you won't have, Chris, you won't even need it. You just automatically will do these things because yeah. you're renewing your mind to what the Word says. Yeah. God doesn't want dead animals anymore. Mm-hmm. Leave them on the side of the road. Yeah. Right? He wants. <laughs> He wants you. Yeah. God wants you. Yeah. That's just all it is. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we're headed to the small. We've gone through the outer courts and the brazen altar and, and the labor, and we're ready to go into that covered tent, that next thing. And the first thing you're presented in when you go in is a seven prong, go ahead there, Jewish candlestick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the first thing that you see there. In the Old Testament, as well as the New Testament, fire represents something. Fire represents the the power of the Holy Spirit. Fire represents God's presence. That's what it represents. It represents anointing, gifting, ability. When you go through step two today, if you haven't already done it, you find out those careless gifts God has put in you. Like some of you are just natural greeters. It's just like some of you are just natural teachers. It's those things, some of you are natural musicians. God put those in you with and that, that's what this represents. You're walking in, recognizing, Lord, thank you for the gifts you've given me. Thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit in me. The candlestick is invite the work of the Holy Spirit, which is the next step. Invite the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. Amen. Amen. You've already given me some gifts and ability, Lord, but I'll take all you got, Lord. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Lord, I just, Lord, I, I want less of me. You know, yes. Lord, I take me in the wrong direction all the time. Yeah. Lord, I just, when I'm in your presence, Lord, I see there's parts of me that aren't right. And so, Lord, I don't focus on those. I give those to you, and I just say, give me more of you, Lord. Just let those things, you know, I've got this problem in this area, Lord. I don't put focus on that. I put on what you want to replace it with. Lord, and I just I just ask, ask that your Holy Spirit flow through me. Mm-hmm. That's how you get in. We haven't even prayed for that people yet. We haven't got there yet. You're not even in this prayer. This is all preparing you with the right heart to pray. Yeah. When you do this, you're going to be able to ask God for the world, and you're going to feel right because you've done all this. Mm-hmm. It's good. Yeah. All right, here we go. As Isaiah says, says it like this. Isaiah 11, 2 says, And the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. Mm-hmm. 
in those. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and we've talked about this a lot, the fear of the Lord. Yeah. That's what you, when you're walking and you're getting closer to the presence of God, the Lord, I recognize I'm nothing without you. I recognize the awesomeness of the Lord, of the, of the God you, God. Mm -hmm. All right? I want the work of God inside of me. Amen? Paul Amen. says it like this. Let's go Old Testament, New Testament. 2 Timothy 1, verses 6 and 7 says this. He said, this is why I remind you. I remember when I got ordained as a pastor. I was 27 years old, and I remember Pastor Dion Dodge uh, praying over me. He prayed this scripture over me. And uh, now I'm old. <laughs> and I didn't realize how, you know, because he's talking about being uh, young. Well, this is, he talks about being young, younger than before. But anyway, <laughs> this is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. All right? The spirit of God, the wisdom, the understanding. God, had, that's, that's what, that's what that, that candlestick represents. All right? God has a gift and calm inside of you. Amen. Amen. And there's nothing that excites me and fills me with joy more than seeing you all walk around. Yeah. There's nothing more thrilling to see you get that pull. This is what I was made to do. Yeah. And see you walk out and then see you, you know, spread that amongst other people. Anyway, God has a, a, a gift and a calling. Okay, so you've gone through. Holy Spirit helps stir you up. And the next thing you see is this next picture here. You go on the other side of the candlestick. And there is this thing table that has bread on it. It's actually called shoe bread. Not shoe like what you're wearing, S-H-E-W. <laughs> shoe bread, all right? There's 12 freshly baked hot loaves of bread. Can you imagine the person in charge of that? Every time you know, you got, hey, you pick up a move. <laughs> My job is to make sure there is fresh bread for God and all the people that are passing there. I mean, that's, you know, how did they bake it back then? I don't know what went out there, all right? You know the thing about bread? It's not. Remember you had that icky smell out there <laughs> of the dead animals, mm. carcasses, charcoal, and you walk in. That's why I think this is covered. God purposely has this covered. You go in, you change atmospheres, and all of a sudden you're flooded with a new aroma, a new aroma, and that represents something. The shoe bread represents God's word, the Bible. Scripture. Point number five is this. The table of shoe bread means we can claim the promises in God's word. Yeah. That is the sweetest smelling aroma you and I can have. Praising God, the Bible says, gives him a sweet smelling aroma. Do you know how we get a sweet smelling aroma? We take his word of God. Yeah. And we use it. You know, it brings relief and freshness in every situation yeah. because it's true. Yeah. Find some, find some promises in God's word, all right? And get them for yourself. Yeah. Joshua 1.8 says this. We'll go Old Testament, New Testament. Joshua 1.8 says, study. Study the book of instruction continually. Well, just on Sundays or just, at, no, continuously. Remember, we spent all of July, Book of Proverbs, trying to get you guys in your Bible every day. And, you know, I had some good praise reports from people. Some people actually did. All right, and now we're finished. We're now spending a month on prayer. Okay, these these are these are what we need to do. Uh, be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Jesus says it like this in Matthew four, verse four. It says this. It says, but Jesus told them, "No, the scriptures say people do not live by bread." This Jesus is referring to this. This Old Testament. He says, "We don't live by bread alone, but by every word." That's how God represents the word of God. Every word that comes from the mouth of God. Yeah. That's yeah. our shoe bread today. Father God, thank you for the word. Lord, I know I don't know what to do today, but I know I can find an answer in the word. Lord, I don't know. I'm just thank you for this. I'm thank you for living in this day where I can have multiple copies. Lord, I can have print copies. I can have electronic copies. I can have it on my phone. They can put it on the screen behind me, Lord. Thank you for the word of God. Amen. It's amazing. Yeah. It's a sweet smelling aroma. It's fresh. You always find something fresh. Well, I've read the scripture before. Oh, but if you read it in your life looking for something, you'll find it. Amen? Just like that bread. Picture that bread. You will walk to your house, right, with a bit of bread. All right? Every time you open your Bible or open that screen, ah, thank you, Lord. God's word. All right. Now you're getting closer and closer to the presence of God. You're getting closer and closer, and I have two minutes. Closer and closer. <laughs> 
But there's one last piece of furniture before you get there. One last piece of furniture. We'll put it up there. And this does have a strong scent. This, this, um, uh, this is the, the uh, altar of incense. Altar. Uh, I've, this, script, this picture I had had the word golden on it. I, some refer to the word golden. I think it's made of gold, that's why. But the part I want you to remember is the altar of incense. Same thing, you know, they, you carry it around and you see that smoldering in there. It's the incense. Mm -hmm. And the incense stands for something. It's your point number six. Worship. Mm -hmm. Remember I just told you a second ago, when we worship God, it's, a, it's an incense to him. It's like, when you guys were in here this morning, we were rocking, we were going, I mean, we were like, you know, we, we were just in it. Yeah. And God's just, Soaking it in, all right? Hallelujah. Worship produces that sweet smelling incense. Mm -hmm. When you praise God for what He did and what He's going to do, that's that's where you that's worship isn't about a certain song or a certain certain style. Worship is an attitude. Yes. And it's, it's all about Him. Mm -hmm. It's all about you, Jesus. It's just all about you. It's this, you know, even a lot of our worship songs, we're just so careful because we, even though today's song, we talk about the eye, we want to make sure the eye always points back to Jesus. You know, you don't want someone yeah. building you up. No. I mean, you want someone building, gee, that's worship. You know, I, that, that's what you're doing. Oh, Jesus, you know, it's amazing what you've done and what you're doing. It says there in Psalm 95, verses 6 and 7, it says, come now, let us worship and cry out. Yeah. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God, maker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Continue there, verse 7, for he is our God. We are the people. He watches over the flock under his care. Proverbs 18, verse 10 says, The name of the Lord, Jesus, we worship you. The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. Your version may say, say a strong tower. The godly do something. Run to me. <laughs> You're safe. Oh, Jesus, I just love you. I worship you. You take care of our lives. Finally, finally, finally we get to this last thing. What made, you, what made Indiana Jones famous? <laughs> the Ark of the Covenant. It literally did have the angels with the wings up there. The seat referred to also the mercy seat. You could actually sit on there. Now, after all this, again, in order, you're like, and again, it's, it's a process we're learning. It's not a, well, you have to do it. It's like we're being shown how to, you, don't you want to touch God's heart in a way that's going to, I mean, it's just that it's like, Lord, I, yeah, I want benefit from me, but Lord, I just, you've already done enough. I just want to, I just want to, I just want to, I just want to, I want to, I want to show you I love you. So I, I listen to what you say. I, I, you know what, when your kids do what you say, you know, it's like, doesn't that change things for you? <laughs> you know, you're like, yeah, like that, all right? And that's where we finally get to the important thing that needs for us now to know. Number seven, Ark of the Covenant. That's where they got to do this. After they went through this whole process, intercede for others. Amen. That's really your last job in prayer. And honestly, most of the time, it's been my first. God, I need God. I'm desperate. God, help me. God, 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 God. Yep. And I, I know God's fine with that. He doesn't. But he says, you know, there's a better way for us. Just focus on all these areas first. He's going to take care of our needs. He's given us the ability. Jesus is our intercessor. He's continually interceding for us. Him and the Holy Spirit are continually doing that. But now we come to him and say, oh Lord, I see I'm a fallible man. I've made mistakes, but Lord, thank you for your forgiveness. I praise you for who you are. I thank you, Lord. I have my own infirmities and problems, but Lord, you wash me clean. Father, now I bring to you, Father, just my cares, my worries, yes. my kids, my grandkids, my job, my finances. It's just, it's just a, you know, and, and, that, and at that point, if you've really done this, I challenge you. It's okay to beg him. You beg him. If you got people in your, your marriage not working for your kids, you beg the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You, again, don't start out. You don't need to, but you're like, you recognize, Lord, I just, I'm desperate, Lord. Yeah. I'm desperate, Father. I need you to move. My coworkers, I am not getting along at all. I'm begging you. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing. Because you've done it in order. You're not obeying. You know, some of us, you know, I do the difference, like if you get something and they just don't receive it, or they just like, they expect it. And they just like, you know, it's just people want, want, want. Mm -hmm. But when, you, when you've gone through that proper order, recognize who God is, and then you're just 
You know you can come boldly for, before the throne and intercede for others. In fact, our last, our last scripture here in the Testament pressure. Testament. Verse is in 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 and 2. And he says, I urge you, I urge you, pray for all people. And it's specific, intercede on their behalf. Give thanks for them. And then the second verse has you with kings and people in authority. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so we can live in peace amongst each other. Quiet lives, marked by godliness and dignity. God will meet you there. Let's just keep going, all right? The last fill in there is this. Prayer should be our first response, not our last resort. Amen? Amen. Yeah, Let's close your notes. Father, thank you, Lord God, for just this example that you've given us of just simply how to uh, uh, how, how you modeled prayer for us. Uh, from the beginning of time, you had a plan to be close to us. And Father, you, it is your desire that nothing be in the way of that. And so we thank you for the example, the Lord, of entering the courts with thanksgiving. Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the example of blood being shed uh, on our behalf. We thank you, Lord, that, that we recognize our own iniquities and that we need cleansing in Jesus. You provide that, Father. We, enter, we recognize we're entering with, with thanksgiving and, and, and glory, Father. We just thank you for it all in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Before we go today, let's just take one thing. Before we go, there could be some here today that have said, you know what, this all sounds real good, but I don't know Jesus. There could be some in this room that, that they, 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 they maybe have been to church or maybe they've been coming for a while, but they've never really brought Christ into their life. I'm here to tell you today, I want to pray with you. And we're all going to pray with you. And so if there's anybody here today that says, you know what, my relationship with God is not right. I don't, I don't have the presence of Jesus in my life, and I want to ask you in my life today, would you just be really bold and just kind of slip your hand up in the air for just a minute so we can all be in praying together? Anybody else today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's all pray this prayer together. This is Romans 10. Father God, Father God, together we openly declare that Jesus, your Lord, we believe in our heart that you raised him from the dead and that we are saved. Believing in our heart makes us right with God. And we openly declare we are saved in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Let's all stand today. Let's all get ready to, uh, they're going to do a few things. We're going to have some prayer partners going to be walking up front, and they're going to be on either side. Uh, we're going to sing one last song together. Feel free to go ahead, or please do, while the prayer partners are in there, go ahead and um, go up and receive prayer. Any kind of prayer that you have could be big, could be small. Also, take pull out your connection card. If you made any sort of decision for Christ, please mark that on there so we can be praying with you. The most, again, the most I want to do is just send you a letter, connect with you. Make sure that's taken care of. If you have an offering or anything else like that, when I dismiss you in just a moment, the ushers will be in the back and we take all those cards and just put them in their buckets, all right? So, uh, so if you need prayer, please walk up front. Let's just stand up and uh, uh, the words will be on the back. The song will be, let's just sing a few verses together again as people have been praying for one another. Here we go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Worthy of every song. song we could ever sing. i uh -huh.
another level. Help us, Lord, as we leave today. Wherever we're at, Lord, let us not go back. Let us move up just one more step. Lord, we thank you that you long to be with us. Jesus, we're declaring that we long to be with you. Today, as we leave, I speak blessing over every person in this room today. As they walk out of this building today, Father, may they, may they enjoy the full presence of Jesus everywhere they go. Thank you, Jesus. We don't have to follow the cloud or the pillar, but Holy Spirit, you are with us, guiding us every step of the way. Lord, we thank you for it and look forward to what you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you guys. If you come to class, we'll be back there again. Fellowship with one another. We love you guys. God bless.